Hello and welcome to Final Fantasy XV Weapon Analysis. Today's episode is about the Royal Arm Daggers, Swords of the Wanderer. Because this weapon is so similar to normal daggers, I'll be comparing it to them a lot in this video. But without any further ado, let's start with the usual quick look at the weapon's moveset. This weapon's moveset has two types of attacks, stronger slower attacks and fast dagger slashes. A good rule of thumb is that the slow attacks are not that great, but the fast dagger attacks are really really good. This combo starter is a good example of the worst type of attack. Sure, it deals a lot of damage, but it's so slow you could do like 3 dagger attacks during the windup. Speaking of dagger attacks, the main combo is literally the same as that of every normal dagger in the game. Same speed, same animation. The combo finisher is once again one of these slow attacks, and I'll be perfectly honest here, I can't think of a single reason why you'd ever want to let the combo finish. It's not that this attack is bad or anything. Well, it's not great, but that's not the issue. The thing is, you can do this exact same attack just by doing the forward directional attack, and that's doable at any point in the combo. If for some reason you want to do this type of attack, just push the left analog stick towards the enemy. No reason to ever wait until the end of the combo. The aerial combo is phenomenal. It's only got 3 attacks, but they are lightning fast and deal significantly more damage than the ground attacks. The best part is, you can do this at any time by doing one of the directional jumps. The face counter is also one of the best in the game. Use it. And lastly, we have the warp strike. It's not that great. The damage it deals is barely more than what the basic aerial combo does, but costs more health. The only situation when it's ever useful is when you're very far away from the enemy. Like with all warp strikes, you deal more damage the greater the distance, but the self damage remains static. In fact, it's pretty decent when used from very far away, but if you're even at a medium distance, it's better to just warp with another weapon and do three normal attacks. You'll do similar damage with a little to no health loss. If you've seen my other videos, you might have noticed that I usually avoid talking about the stagger or poise mechanic of this game. And when it does come up, I tend to just hand wave it away by saying it's too unreliable or too obscure for you to be able to build any strategy around staggering enemies. I stand by these statements, but this is a rare scenario where stagger potential is relevant and worth talking about. Normal daggers tend to suffer from the lack of stagger potential or poise damage in their attacks. Even weaker enemies can usually just stand there and take the hits and either counterattack or just move out of your attack range because it takes multiple hits to stagger them. Swords of the Wanderer don't have this problem. In fact, they're the opposite. Their stagger potential per hit seems to be somewhere closer to normal swords, but they still attack with dagger speed, making them have one of the highest stagger over time of all weapons. I mean, just look at the footage here. With a little luck and help from the party, I'm able to stunlock even this gigantic snake dragon enemy. It's still not something you should rely on. Think of it more of as a passive bonus. When using these weapons, enemies tend to counterattack you much less because they'll get staggered more often. And every once in a while, it might even save you from getting hit. But now about things you can rely on. As I already said in the moveset part, I don't find the strong combined form attacks of this weapon to be worthwhile most of the time. The combo starter is easier to avoid, but it's also less of a problem. It's not really a bad attack, it's just not that great. You got 4 weapon slots, you're bound to have something with a better opener. Just use that to engage the enemy before switching to Swords of the Wanderer. Personally, I recommend the Sword of the Wise for obvious reasons, but almost any weapon will do. The combo finisher, on the other hand, is never worth using. Like I've previously explained, you might as well just use the forward attack instead to have the same effect. To avoid the ender, you need to use weapon swapping, because the other directional attacks don't reset this weapon's combo. To force a combo reset on this weapon, you need to do two consecutive basic combo attacks with either a sword, a spear, a shield, or a pair of daggers. No other weapon types do this, and it has to be at least two attacks, otherwise it doesn't work. If you're curious about why it works like this, I recommend watching the first part of my weapon swapping explanation video, links in the description. Personally, I recommend using either a sword or daggers for this, because the other two weapon classes are a bit slow. 
Most of the time you don't even need to worry about this. Enemies almost never let you do a full combo on them, and these weapon switches are much better used for just closing the gap if an enemy gets thrown out of your reach during a combo. Just remember to always do two attacks with a secondary weapon, and that it needs to be one of these four weapon classes. So, to sum it all up, start the combo with a weapon that has a decent opener, do the Swords of the Wanderers combo all the way until Noctis combines them, and then switch to Swords or Daggers. Do two attacks, and then switch back to Swords of the Wanderer. That's the most effective way I found to use this royal arm, but I found another way to use it that was almost as effective and requires less weapon swapping. The aerial combo of this weapon is really good, in fact, it's faster and more damaging than the ground combo. So, instead of doing any ground attacks at all, you can just use the left and right directional jumps to be in the air as much as possible, and just constantly do aerial attacks instead. You can even start the combo with aerial attacks to avoid the problems with the opener. This creates a funny looking playstyle where Noctis is just constantly jumping back and forth in front of the enemy while hitting them. Like I said, it's not quite as effective as attacking on the ground, but it doesn't require having two other weapons. Just know that it's not a good idea against small enemies, because Noctis will just miss most of his aerial attacks against them. You might already have guessed most of my build advice for this weapon based on how much I emphasize the use of weapon swapping, but here's what I think is a good build for Swords of the Wanderer. For accessories, it's the same story as always. Just use whatever damage to survivability ratio you like. With weapons, at least have a sword or daggers with you. Not just to change weapons mid-combo, but also because you never ever want to rely solely on royal arms, unless you have a magic build or something. I personally prefer the sword over daggers because it lets me air step and link strike, but daggers are better for mid-combo weapon swapping because of their speed. Either works well, and to be fair, spears aren't a bad option either. For the other weapon slots, I recommend the Sword of the Wise just for the combo starter. Swords and daggers have decent openers as well if you want more versatility in your setup instead. However, having Sword of the Wise creates a fun build where you have different engaging tools for different ranges. Sword of the Wise for short to mid range, a normal weapon warp strike for mid to long range, and Sword of the Wanderer warp strike for very long range. For the last lot, just use whatever really. For all intents and purposes, Swords of the Wanderer are just trail arm daggers. The range and stagger of this weapon are its most significant advantages over normal endgame daggers. When it comes to damage, it also exceeds every dagger in the game. Except Swill Crossblades at full health, of course. Bet none of you saw that one coming. When not at full health, Swords of the Wanderer are significantly better than Swill, but this flips entirely with the use of a potion. Still, when compared to other endgame weapons, they're well above even Balmung, Apocalypse or Flayer, making them one of the best damage dealers in the game. Back to dagger comparisons, you lose the good sidestep move with this weapon and have to rely on other weapons for maximum damage, whereas with the daggers you can just hold the attack button and notice will do all the work for you. And the self-damage is an ever-present issue with the royal arms. So, Swords of the Wanderer are like a stronger, but harder to use and less versatile version of normal daggers. Possibly the best option you have for just wailing on enemies all the way until you complete Randolph's questline. It still has some niche uses over Zwill, like being compatible with other royal arms, but where it really shines is being the second best dagger while still being obtainable in Chapter 3. It's like the Ultima Blade, but for daggers. Thank you for watching this episode of Final Fantasy XV Weapon Analysis. If you got any thoughts about the weapon, you can leave them in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.